Virtual reality gaming has been seeing a big push for the last year and a half or so, and while it's not affordable for everyone, we are seeing more and more games providing VR support. Hardware like the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive dominate PC VR, but it's not just PC players that have access these days. The console market, or at least the PlayStation console market, has the PSVR, and you can get your hands on a Samsung Gear for your mobile device as well. Some of those devices are a little pricier than others. The Samsung Gear can be purchased for around £100, the PlayStation VR is around £300, and the Rift will set you back £400, give or take. And then the big daddy, the HTC Vive, is a mammoth, £600 to £700, depending on where you shop. If you want to play some VR games on your mobile phone, well that's pretty affordable, but if you want to start playing fully fledged AAA games in immersive VR, that's going to set you back a bit. In terms of actual VR quality, the Vive and Oculus at the moment provide the best experience, but not everyone has 400 or especially 600 to spend on something that's arguably quite niche. And here is the problem at hand. At the moment, is VR worth it? Is it ahead of its time? And more importantly, is it something that's here to stay this time? Gaming goes through a lot of phases. Some stay, some don't. I remember back in 2011 when 3D gaming was trying to take off and a game like BF3 had a load of 3D support for it. 3D monitors were being sold. I owned one, but I never really used the 3D all that much. I tried it, but I didn't stick with it and I don't think anyone else really did either. It seemed to phase out eventually. And the main reason was, well, there wasn't really a demand for it and the games companies didn't provide enough support. Now, before we move on, let's just pause for a minute and take in some stats. In 2015, there was only around 7 million active VR users worldwide. That still sounds like a lot, but that is nowhere near the 90 million mark, and by 2018, it's predicted to be nearer to 170 million. Now, that's across all VR platforms, including mobile, but the increase in its popularity is impressive. The more people that invest in VR, the more VR products will be made, and therefore, the more the price will drop. Now, there are a lot of VR games out there right now, but a lot of them you could describe as party games or throwaway games. There aren't actually that many standalone AAA games made specifically for VR. Star Trek Bridge Crew released recently, and with three other friends, that's good fun for a couple hours in VR, especially as it's made specifically for it. And then you've got big titles like Fallout getting VR support, even games like Doom with a VR version now. In terms of very recent announcements, we've got LA Noir VR and also the PlayStation exclusive The Last Guardian. Arguably the best use of VR though is when it's used as a tool to improve a game. Think of something along the lines of Elite Dangerous or Project Cars 2, adding another level of immersion to the game. When a game is designed specifically for VR, it can work, but some problems have to be dealt with such as moving around, and all games tackle this problem differently. The main issue with movement in VR games though is that it isn't natural when you're seeing something and not feeling it and this can cause a lot of people to feel nauseous or get headaches when playing VR for a long period of time. Your brain is seeing movement but your body isn't feeling it and so it thinks something's wrong and makes you feel sick. Of course that's not all people but I think it's the majority. We've all got human brains after all which are relatively the same in that respect. Some people can just get car sickness, you know, just from traveling in a car. We're all different. But when it comes down to long-term gaming, what are the downsides of using VR? Is it healthy to have a screen really close to your eyes for a long gaming session like four plus hours? Honestly, I don't know. And I tend to play VR games for one hour maximum and then I need to take a break. I had a really unpleasant experience with a game called Onward and you control the movement with the trackpad on one of the Vive controllers. And I played that for about 10 minutes and it made me feel sick for the rest of the day. And that kind of experience with VR just puts me off it completely because obviously I don't want to play a game and then feel sick. Other games I've played though in VR like the Star Wars X-Wing experience on the PlayStation VR which is excellent. You just kind of sat in a cockpit in that one and I could deal with that perfectly fine and play it for a couple hours. Generally speaking for me my experience has been that if it's a game where you're in a seat 
and you're not really moving around that much, it's fine. But if I'm moving with a controller or a trackpad, so I'm seeing a movement, but I'm not feeling it, it just makes me feel sick and there's not much I can do about that. On the flip side to that though, when it's done really well and you've got a really tight experience like the Portal VR demo that Valve made where it's all confined to one room and you actually move your real body if you've got a big enough room, that one is awesome and it completely sells the experience because you're moving your body so you're seeing and feeling the movement at the same time and your brain is okay with that so you just don't feel sick that way. Unfortunately, not everyone has a massive room to do that kind of thing in. There's also another problem at hand here. The two main companies making VR for PC are obviously trying to compete with each other. This leads to games that are being made specifically for one of the devices, and that leads to separation. It's not ideal when you spend £600 on a VR system, only to be told that the game you want to play is on a separate device only. Of course, this isn't new, it's exclusives, and it's similar to picking up a console, Xbox or Sony. Sometimes there are exclusive games that you can only play on one console. The difference with VR though is that it's a very expensive additional piece of hardware so it's disappointing to see some games only appear on one or the other. Robo Recall for example, a game made by Epic Studios, is an Oculus only game and while you have to remember that Oculus do fund VR games so they do have the right to limit it, it's not ideal for the consumers. VR's future relies heavily on support from game developers, but also it needs to come down in price to make it more mainstream. Right now it's relatively niche and only available to the few who can afford it. It also has in reality limited games and more games need to be specifically designed for VR to make it compelling. If you head to Steam you'll see a ton of throwaway VR games, office simulator, carnival games, games where you pick up weapons and shoot at targets. There are a lot of cool games but they're the sort of thing that you play for 20 minutes and you get bored of. What we need is more games like Resident Evil 7 which allowed you to play through the entire game in VR if you dared. Fallout 4 VR will be a big VR title when it releases due to just how popular the Fallout franchise is. That being said, producing a game for VR takes time and more importantly money and game developers need to see a return. If the install base on VR is small then perhaps they won't see a return that's great enough and in turn they won't make any more VR games. Ironically for more people to invest in VR they need the games to do so so it's somewhat of a vicious circle. Now just two months ago in October, Eve Valkyrie developer CCP Studio shut down their VR department. They'll continue to support their VR games but they'll not be making any new ones for at least two to three years. And the CCP CEO Hilmar Pettersson said, We will continue to support our VR games but we will not be making material VR investments until we see market conditions that justify further investments beyond what we've already made. Now I think that's quite a worrying statement for VR, especially as Eve Valkyrie is one of the best VR games out there. It somewhat suggests that for a lot of developers the cost of developing games for VR just simply isn't worth the investment at the moment. There is another problem that we haven't even touched on yet either. Sure, VR is expensive, but sometimes it's not just the VR that you need. If you buy an Oculus or a Vive, you're going to need a pretty powerful PC to be able to run VR games in the first place. Some people may want to invest in VR, but they don't quite have the specs required and perhaps they can't afford both. Either way, it's not just a case of getting a VR system and it will be plug and play. You need to ensure that you've got what it takes to run it. And that's what's good about the PlayStation VR. For those who have it, they don't really have to worry if their console is powerful enough to utilise it as it's designed specifically for a certain set of hardware. My personal opinion is that it's 10 years ahead of its time right now. Whilst the current screens look okay, you can still notice aliasing and even the individual pixels sometimes on the screen. Higher resolutions are needed to really sell the experience. In an ideal world, I think you'd need 8K per eye, but the data and horsepower required to do that just isn't there yet. The setup of it all too, anyone who's watching this and has used a VR system, Vive, Oculus, even the consumer-friendly PSVR will know that it's the right faff to set it all up, configure it, get the wires in the right place, set up the base stations. The headsets are heavy too and they don't offer you an intuitive way of quickly removing them and seeing into the real world when you need to. 
You'll even trip over the wires sometimes when playing on a Vive, constantly having to move the cable out of the way. I reckon it won't be truly mainstream until it's wireless, easier to set up, higher resolution and a much, much smaller form factor. Now VR games can be a great escape. It really draws you into a world if you're playing a good game or experience, if that's a racing game, a story driven adventure or a quick trip to the carnival, but I think it's still got a very long way to go before it's widely accepted and mainstream. That being said, it's not just games that benefit from VR though. Businesses are starting to see the potential in VR as well. With the immersion and photorealistic visuals that you get, it's a great way to train staff and even test new products and designs. For example, there's currently a virtual speech program that aims to help people speak in front of crowds by simulating it. And if you've ever tried VR, you know how real it can feel when you're inside it and immersed, especially if you're not used to playing games. I saw snooker player Ronnie O'Sullivan trying out a pool game in VR and he fell over because he tried to lean on the table that wasn't there. The point being, VR can feel really real at times and that makes it a great training tool. The current kit that we have now, especially the Vive, is in a really good place for science, engineering, and education, or even stuff like offering cool experiences to disabled people, for example. VR obviously has many purposes, and it seems as though that it's grown rapidly, but right now it still isn't mainstream enough when it comes to gaming to really have the impact that it needs. Developers and publishers have to commit right now to making VR games even when they aren't really going to get a great return on them just to keep the momentum of VR going. That being said, I don't think VR is a fad and I think that in 10 years time there will be compelling AAA VR games and experiences that a lot of people will play and they'll own these things that they can clip onto their face and if they want to see the real world, boom, hit a switch, there it is, you know, 8K screens in each eye. Realistically, I think the ultimate place for this is something like the holodeck from Star Trek and yeah, maybe in the past that seemed like science fiction but now considering the tech that we have in 2017 i'm beginning to think that that kind of thing in the future will be a reality i can envision at some point down the line in the future people will have dedicated rooms in their house where they can just do vr stuff and instead of a vr headset they have vr contact lenses that replace their vision and there's no wires speakers in the room and you're just going to be completely immersed in a wireless vr experience that's just so damn cool. It's exciting to think about what the possibilities are and going completely wireless with these systems is going to be a big priority. So there we have it guys, that's my take on the current state of VR gaming. I've got an HTC Vive, I've got an Oculus, I've got a PSVR, I've used all of these systems and I have to admit that I haven't touched them for a very long time. At the moment there's no really compelling gameplay experiences that are pulling me in and kind of enticing me to play. Nothing that's getting me that excited anyway. And of course the worry that I'm going to feel sick, which I just don't want. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've got a VR system, whichever one it is, are you using it regularly? What's the best or worst experiences that you had on it? If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.